and welcome back to the Try Time Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Callum. And welcome to our live reaction, pretty much, of the 35-man England squad. We're going to go over some of our key talking points. Also, in a week where we are officially psychic, the Warrington coach has been revealed. Yeah, we called it. We called it. If you haven't seen us literally be rugby league geniuses, go check out the last main podcast episode. Uh, I will be doing kind of a discussion video, my initial thoughts on that on Monday, so be sure to subscribe, turn the big red button grey, and yeah, check your sub boxes on Monday for that one coming through. So, without further ado, England squad, where should we get started? Right, well I think the big thing that sort of stands out is where the hell is Jake Connor in this squad? What does he have to do? Like, come on, he's been arguably Not the best play player. Not play for the FC by the looks of it. Yeah, but there's other FC players in there. Like, it, it's a blip. To me, oh, yeah, it, look, definitely. it looks like a clear thing where it's like, he just Wayne just doesn't like Jake Connor. Because, like, I really like Josh Griffin as a player, but, like, watch a whole FC game and Connor's the best player, arguably. Like, come well, on. Well, I'm all to the point. Watch a Hull FC game. Josh Griffin, as good of a player as he is, is not an England starting centre. And if he is, we have problems. Yeah, he's a top Super League level centre. He's not. A, he's a player that I don't mind, Josh. There's a lot of players I mind more than Josh Griffin. Because I think he deserves to be called up to this squad just because of what he's done over the years and how underrated I think he is. I don't think he starts for England or anything, but I think there's also players worse than him in this squad. And that Connor should be in for. I think it's a good nod to Griffin. And well, I'm that's, not fa- that's a fair shout. I will say, however... If we are honestly looking at toppling the Australians, Griffin should not be starting level without yeah. a massive improvement this year. And that's no disrespect to him and what he's achieved these last few years. So, for me, I think the person that should be dropped for Connor is probably Nile Levels. Yeah. Which is a little harsh because he is a good player. But how many fullbacks do we need? I mean, for me, Tomkins starts. Tomkins is nailed. It's probably one of the first names on team sheet with how he's playing at the then minute. Then let's we're... assume you take three fullbacks because that seems to be how they do. Connor is one of those. Yeah. And, and then, then for me, Ratchford, who can also cover in the halves if needed, similar to what Widdup did in under Bennett. Yeah. And then because then you also you're going to take Lomax, aren't you? Who can also play there? Like you've got yeah. options there. You're then. probably going to take Lomax, who for me should start at six, but again provides an alternative at one yeah and then you've also got bloody hardacre as well who you probably take as well hardacre for me is probably yeah i'm gonna say he probably gets in the centers rather than at fullback but it's depth well, the names that have missed out then because i think connor's certainly not the only notable absentee from this list yeah i mean for me jake truman i mean he's already started off electrifying he's been good over the last couple of years for cast He's the, he's the halfback of the future for England. You know, he's probably England's starting halfback once, you know, you, you lose Lomax when he gets a bit older and that sort of thing. I don't think it'd hurt to have him in this meet-up squad at all over someone like, let me just pull a name off. I know he's not a halfback, but Dan Sargent. So we've already gone over all wingers, centres, fullbacks or whatever that are in the squad. Dan Sargentson, that seems to me purely looking at it as Wigan bias because I don't think Sargentson, you know, he's a top, he's a top Super League sort of centre, plays a bit of fullback. The only thing I'm well, going to but... argue on here is your Wigan bias point because Callum Watkins is in that squad undeservably and he has never once pulled on a cherry and white jersey. Arguably, I get that, but then also I switch that from Wigan bias to is it not you've like for example Callum Watkins and Jermaine McGilvery arguably in the 27 World Cup. 2017 World Cup, sorry, was two of England's best I'm players. Say that were many long time ago. I'm surprised you remember that from 2000 year back. But they're, you get, do you get what I mean? Like they're players that you look at and you're like, they always, you know, they they're the usually the England starting centre wing partnership over, you know, three or four years ago. They were best thing England had out there. That's why I think McGilvery has been put in and and probably Watkins. Like if you're going off form, then arguably neither. Do you think of them Watkins be. gets in because he has played NRL? Yeah, as well, that's probably the same Which, as Sargent. Let's be honest, his NRL stint was nothing short of a bit shambolic. Well, Although yeah, arguably was better than his Toronto stint for obvious reasons. But 
yeah, it's always hard moving over there, and certain players have found it easier than others. You know, Sargentson went over there, again, didn't light it up. Certain players like George Williams, who I'm really glad's in this squad, and, you know, he's, he's another one nailed on at starting the halves. He's absolutely smashing it in NRL, and, you know, fair play, completely fair play to him as well for being in there. But there is some names in here that just shouldn't, for me. Manfredi, I mean, he's not even best winger at Wigan for me, and there's, there's wingers out there that yeah. deserve a shot over Manfredi him. Manfredi and McGilvery, for me, are two names that... Manfredi just hasn't played enough rugby to even know really where he's at at this point. Why do we need this many wins he in could, this one? He could be electrifying like he was in his peak, or he could have had that many injuries. He's basically Joe Vickery with lighter coloured hair. And <laughs> yeah. as for Jermaine McGilvery, like you said, four years ago, absolutely fantastic, but so was Ryan Hall. You know, no one's really saying that Hall should have been called up. Obviously, because he's not played much at Sydney, but still. For me, McGilvery's day was in 2017, and since then, him and Huddersfield more widely have not done anything special to convince me that he should feature. I don't think he did amazing against New Zealand a couple of years back, actually. Yeah, I... I, I, see, I don't, I, I don't, I don't think McGilvery should be in here, but I also don't mind that in a way as much as I mind Manfredi. I just, I don't know why it just bugs me that one. I just don't think it's like even Charnley over him for me makes sense. Well, I mean, arguably, I think Liam Marshall outperforms him as a Wigan winner, the Wigan winger these days. Yeah, I'd argue someone like a bit of an outlandish shouty, but someone like. Uh, Tom Davis at Catalan deserves a I little I thought you were going to say Tom Briscoe then now we're no, out no. to lose my absolute mind no we're not going that yeah, outlandish Tom bit. Davis Wigan where's the Wigan bias Wayne Tom Davis would do the job well that's why I thought Charnley would Lewis be in the Lewis Taney would probably be a very left field shot. I mean I'd equally say that's ridiculous but I mean if is it were... any more ridiculous than Manfredi probably not I mean if we're talking pure Wigan bias in terms of wingers, we could go for every single winger in Super League because half of them have played for Wigan. You know, you've got Joe Burgess, Marshall, Tierney. If Joe uh, Burgess had been there, I would have absolutely lost my mind on that because he does not scream international quality at the moment either. Yeah. Anyone else that you. Like, that's wing, sort of as backs done. In terms of the forwards, I mean. Well, I know, I know straight away what name you're going to mention, but before I do, I'm going to throw another one in. Who, in my opinion, deserves a spot. Mike McMeekin. Yeah, as well. Honestly, I think you could make a case for McMeekin. You could make a case for his second row partner at Catalan Whitley as well, because I think he's been consistent. And there's a lot of second rowers that are English that I think deserve a shout. The problem that they've there's got one obvious that... straight swap here, though. Go Hughes on. left out, Curry brought in. What's that about? Same coach, same club. Same season. If any Warrington fans want to come and tell me Ben Curry did a better job than Hughes last year, the only response I have is, did you not watch any of the games on our league because you quite clearly haven't seen a single game in over 12 months? Yeah, I think the problem that he's always going to be with the second rowers in English is there's that many now. And, you know, if you go a few years back or, you know, maybe say six, seven years ago, you know, a player like Hughes or a player like even Curry, even though he didn't play the best last year or whatever, you know, he's still a, over the, the course of the last few seasons has been good. Them sort of players are playing for England starting. But when you've got Bateman and Whitehead essentially nailed on for them spots, there's only so many second row spots you can put in a squad. And I mean, we've not even talked about talked about Farrell who's in there. And it's like what I'm thinking with Farrell is I probably the next. He's the one off the bench. He's the next best we've got after Bateman and Whitehead. Yeah, well then that begs a question because for me, like if you need, you've got them two, Bateman and Whitehead, I, unless Bateman starts loose, which maybe does happen, but them two starting second well, unless, rowers. as long as he ain't starting bloody centre again. Yeah, well that, that shouldn't happen hopefully. But for me, a player like, you might, instead of taking someone like, for example, I reckon in Wayne's mind is Curry or Farrell, why take both when one of them's probably not going to make the squad? Why not take someone who's going to be the starting second rower once Whitehead and Bateman have kind of passed their peak? Like, I, someone like, for example, you've said Hughes as well, quite young. Someone like James Bentley at Saints who ripped it up last season, again, only young, only young himself. There's a load of players like that out there that we've already gone over. McMeekin, Whitley, there's so many more as well that we're not even mentioning that potentially deserve this spot you know and also right, I think well I've got yeah. one for you go on 
35 man squad. There are about 7 names here that aren't even going to make the training session. Given that the game is like 3 days after supposedly we are no longer going to be a COVID restricted country. Why have we got these NRL players here at this point? They're literally, you read the press release, it says they are in regular contact with the coaching team. Should they not be doing that anyway, given there's a World Cup in 200 days? Why does their name need to be on a squad for that to happen? Yeah. Use some of the younger players for that. Wait, like you say, Truman, Bentley, other fringe players like Hughes McMeekin, even some of the other left field shouts. I'm going to throw in a name that might well be an England prop in the next five to ten years. Oledski. Yeah, oh, there's a few. Get them some experience, like these guys that have absolutely lit it up in the nights for the past few years. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, because realistically, these players from NRL, right? So you tell me, George Williams, Josh Hodgson, Sutton, even them, obviously, three from Canberra, as well as Whitehead, four. As well as, you know, if you, maybe Herbie Farnworth maybe is a different one because he hasn't really been sort of involved with England senior setup before, but them four like they are pretty much does nailed he need on to be named in a squad to do that when the likelihood is exactly he's, he's not That's even going to make the initial training session and i wouldn't be surprised if none of the guys actually play in the june friendly given what's happening globally at this point because i think yeah. well last time i checked this may have updated since and may well do by june but even if you're on elite sports pathway you still have to quarantine for two weeks in australia so is this going to be yeah. built in the NRL season that seven players have to come and quarantine? Probably not. Yeah, it, it doesn't need to be done because like we say, a majority of these, you know, a couple are questionable, but they're probably, if you had the World Cup tomorrow, they'd probably be na the names on the on the team sheet. Do you know what I mean? Like play like Williams is going to be the starting halfback, really. Yeah, play, like you say, the only exemption to that is probably Farnworth, who perhaps doesn't get in over... Well, assuming everyone's fit, you'd think it's probably going to be Makinson and Johnston or Hanley, perhaps. Yeah. You'd probably say if you were picking them today, but... Yeah, but I think if Farnworth has know. a good season at NRL, I'd love to see him, wouldn't we? I think if yeah, that could swing it. Yeah. And that'd be great, but... to be honest. I do think that'd be good. Because then I think you can still take Johnston and Hanley in the squad as well. Yeah, like, definitely. We... Uh, which I think I think the problem with this squad I think is the terms of where England are strongest is like in the backs whereas I think in the past it's been the other way around whereas I think we've got a lot of full backs wingers centres you know jostling for them spots but then you look at the props and there's not many props at all in this squad and, and Dan I mean, Sargentson well yeah <laughs> but like you know realistically looking at this Wormsley and Thompson are going to be the starting props you would like to think unless they're playing Wormsley off the bench's impact but they are the main two who are going to be in the team. Then you've got, you know, Mike Cooper and Sutton probably going to be in with a shout. You know, you've got Tom Burgess as well in the squad. Phil Bin, if you want to... Phil Bin prop. can play prop, but I think we both said before this we'd rather him go through losers. Well, him and Morgan Knowles probably is the main 13s. Yeah, I'd take both of them. I would, honestly, if it were tomorrow, I would... Oh, yeah, I, I would. They, that's I think the fact that both of them are in this squad is absolutely great because I think they're quality and that it's good that them players are getting recognised. That but I feel like there's more young players like that that should be in, get in this squad as well. Do you know what I mean? And it's yeah, no disrespect I mean, necessarily. We've just mentioned a few names here. Yeah, we, there's far more than we've mentioned. The likes, of, you know, Smithies, Lees come straight to mind. There's going to be ten, there's going to be ten thousand more that we haven't mentioned that you can probably make somewhat of a case for, but. Yeah, the danger of overanalyzing this too much for what is a quick initial reaction video, I think we're probably going to leave that there. Yeah. So, let us know if you have any other names that you'd want to throw into the squad, who you'd replace them with, why. Have we, in quickly looking over this, blatantly missed something else here? If so, let us know in the comments and we will try and get back to as many of you as we can. Um, be sure to stick around anyway. Daryl Powell reaction video coming on Monday as well as the main pod on Wednesday where we discuss the fallout of the Challenge Cup and look ahead to the next round of Super League which by that point hopefully the fantasy table might have actually updated because let's face it they probably still haven't finished it now. Yeah that is true and yeah justice for Jake Connor, justice for Jake Truman.